History is happening right in front of you, and you're missing it. Here on Black Hollywood Icons, I like to shine a special little light on people in Hollywood making black history happen before our eyes, baby. And you know I was not going to pass up on a chance to run my eyeballs over the 2024 Oscar nominations and give it my own special spin. Which black Hollywood actors can be spotted on the list? What are their chances of winning? Do they deserve that coveted nomination for their role? There's been a lot of talk about snubs and baits for the Oscars. Let me take you on an especially black Hollywood icons kind of journey through the 2024 Oscar nominations. Here are all the especially special things you don't know about it. Remember to click on that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any black Hollywood stories like this one. A lot is going on right now, and you don't want to miss what the buzz is all about. Coleman Domingo was nominated for the actor in a leading role category. He played Bayard Rustin in the drama Rustin. Yes, this is a biopic, and yes, everyone but Hollywood is sick of these. But this is one of Coleman's most mesmerizing roles on the screen. But let's be honest, the reception for the film was pretty lukewarm. It seems this always happens with anything that can be remotely described as melodrama. The audience has a slight dislike towards the work and critics think it's just good. That's not a great sign. But remember that when critics get on their keyboard, they judge the film along with cinematography, makeup, acting, and writing. All of which Coleman has nothing to do with. Is it possible for his acting to stand out in this film and be appreciated for his effort and talent despite the reception? Playing someone who existed is a very difficult thing to do convincingly. At any point in time, audiences will find a reason why the character portrayed was not convincingly played. A lot of critics made the observation that Komen was probably the only reason the film was tolerable through its entire runtime. Let's hope that his efforts to save the film pay off with a sweet Oscar. But even if he doesn't get it, he already got a ton of awards from other places. He won't miss it that badly. I think the chances that he will win are relatively low considering what he's up against. The other actors were served much better material to flex their acting talents than he was, but you never know, the Academy may shock us all. Jeffrey plays Monk in American fiction. Here's a film that stands a pretty good chance. Incredible critical and audience reception. American fiction is a comedic drama in which Jeffrey pays the main character of a frustrated novelist who is fed up with the establishment that profits off of black entertainment that relies on tired and offensive tropes. It hits all the notes a modern comedy should and makes the audience comfortable to laugh at the ideas it plays with. Jeffrey plays this character subtly and believably. You just want to like him, and he adds a layer of depth to the dark comedy that wouldn't exist without him. The best Academy bait is a sad black and white film, but maybe this year they'll give a color film filled with joy a chance to shine as it really should. American Fiction was one of those all black main cast films that fell under the radar of many critics in 2023. The beautiful cinematography, acting and writing give this film the legs it needs to highlight the talent of its actors. Jeffrey stands a good chance yes, even against Bradley Cooper, in the worm-on-a-string film that is Maestro. The character played by Jeffrey is more personable, and the cinematography lends to us developing a relationship with the character. We reflect his own frustrations with black existence and participation in the entertainment industry onto ourselves and leave influenced by the film. He deserves a win. Another nomination for American Fiction. This film does not let up with the nominations. Sterling plays Clifford Ellison in the film and is one of the narrative anchors of the dramatic aspects of the film. He has one of the most enjoyable performances on screen throughout the film, and his acting has incredible comedic timing and believability. However, Sterling himself has reported to Variety that he believes that he will not be winning the Oscar as he is up against Robert Downey Jr., he acknowledges that the nomination is an honor, but does not honestly believe that he will win. I think he stands an incredible chance. His character is lovable and funny, 
Robert hit some serious and complex notes in Maestro, but there is a chance that a more light-hearted character can take over the hearts of the Academy. Serious roles usually win over roles intended to be funny, which is why Sterling believes the odds are stacked against him. However, Robert does not bring the same level of depth, despite playing a more serious role. Danielle Brooks gave the role of her lifetime for The Color Purple. She was nominated for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. She gave a stellar musical and theatrical performance. But unfortunately, talent is not the only factor that the Academy considers when choosing a winner. Musicals are on the downturn of their popularity in Hollywood. After Les Miserables, there's been a lot of talk about whether musicals can still do the same amount of impressing when it comes to the Oscars, and the answer is simply no. Danielle's attention to character detail is one of the reasons the acting and music blended so well into the film. She was able to portray the optimism of a character who has been through a lot in life in a complex way. Her character garnered a lot of sympathy on the screen and in the Academy, but I'm not entirely sure that will warrant her a win. When you first watch The Holdovers, you may suspect that Devine's character is going to pass by and never return. Once the plot sets in, you realize that she may become the backbone of the entire story. Her portrayal of grief and how it looms when not dealt with while still being a sympathetic and comedic character is one of the most heartwarming acting performances of the year. It seems the Academy had the same idea as me because they nominated her for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. Her character's suffering and perseverance and joy leave a sweet and sour taste in our mouths as she strives to find happiness and fight through grief. She spent a substantial amount of time on the screen, despite not really being given the largest set of material and depth to work with for a character. She finds a way to add subtlety and write the character for herself, regardless of the words she was given to say. If you watch this film the wrong way around, I wouldn't blame you for coming out of it believing that she was the main character. She stole the screen and created a sympathetic, struggling character who we as an audience could latch onto while watching every character overcome the struggles that they are facing in their life. All of this is to say that I really, really hope she wins. It would just make sense. Across the Spider-Verse has been described as the turnaround in the animation of the decade. Most art styles and methods of storytelling converge to mimic the comic book mix style of the Spider-Man animated trilogy. The man behind it? Kemp Powers. Spider-Man has to be one of those animations one watches and walks out of the cinema thinking, that's going to change everything. And it did. Looking at reviews and the mere effect that this film has on the landscape of animated films, it deserves an Oscar win. There quite literally is no excuse for it to not get one. While Nimona was a feat when it came to representation and subverting storytelling tropes, Spider-Man was the film that dominated animation in 2023. This is because it subverted one of the most traditional tropes of all superhero stories in a way that hasn't been done before. That trope is the Chosen One. He turned the Chosen One into the Chosen Infinity and represented all spectrums of human existence in the form of Spider-Man, without it coming off as tasteless pandering. This is a feat indeed. It's almost 100% guaranteed that Spider-Man will win the title of animated feature film at the Oscars. For it to not win would be ignoring the shift it caused in the entire industry and the mastery of the animation and storytelling that Kemp Powers headed when creating this film. If there's anything on this list, I'm sure of it's this. But we should all remember that Hayao Miyazaki is an industry favorite. It may be a tough time since he came back to his original animation style and made the masterpiece of a film, The Boy and the Heron. Despite this, I still believe that this will be a winner. A Ugandan musician turned politician who goes by the name Bobby Wine ran for president in 2020 and his efforts were destroyed by the president at the time. From attacks to abducted supporters, his entire movement was brought to its knees by the reigning power of the country. According to Bobby, everything has been about the same, 
except for the feature documentary released in 2023 shot over the course of five years by Boyo. The film is named Bobi Wine, The People's President. It details the struggle for democracy in Uganda, where the presidential regime uses violence to snuff out dissenting voices of the government. Moses took a lot of risks to create this beautiful and important documentary. Not only does it look stunning and have well-done and thoughtful cinematography, but it carries the heaviness and importance of its messaging all the way through. It's a truly moving documentary that reminds me of the constant struggle for democracy in other countries, when most of us live in countries where this is a given. Moses is being honored for this talented and historical work with an Oscar nomination for the best documentary feature. Moses calls the making of this film a labor of love, and an article by The Guardian describes it as a new hope for toppling the Ugandan regime. The hope is that winning an Oscar can give the story even more publicity than it already has and encourage more people to participate in any way they can to bring democracy to the Ugandan regime. But even without a win, the film has done the heavy work to relay the story to millions of people around the world. Misan Haraman debuted his first short film in 2023, and that short film was nominated for an Oscar. Not many people can say they did that. Has a black male director ever done that before? If not, Misan may have made history with his record-timing Oscar nomination. The Actor has been nominated for Best Live Action Short Film. This 18-minute film is about a man who is grieving after witnessing a random violent attack in London. It is a serious emotional hit, which I believe was the intention. But it is also about healing, Harriman explains. The film was moving to most critic viewers, but generally, audiences came out of it with a sort of lukewarm feeling. Most of its reviews hover around 60% in ratings. It's an incredible little film, but I don't honestly believe that it will win. The competitors, like the Wes Anderson short films, are just way too strong and beloved by all audiences, not just critics. Even though the film has depth, the stylistic and storytelling measures that Wes went through to make his short films far outweigh the heavy subject matter of this film and its importance. This time, it looks like Wes is going home with another one. Doesn't he ever get sick of being that good? Click on this next video to catch up on more of the latest in Black Hollywood. Do you think my predictions are correct?